myself. I am sure that my photographs look much better than myself. However, as this is a personal choice of 10 favourite images, I have broken my self-imposed rule, but not for long. So let's get down to business, shall we? The first is the oldest, taken in 2005 with the Olympus E1. That had only 5 million pixels, but today is regarded as a classic camera of its period and, at the time, solved the problem of dust reaching the sensor, a little matter not entirely resolved today. It is sad to think that some photographers wedded to image manipulation mistakenly think that the sun's rays in this image were added in a computer. Oh dear, no. I go for reality, and getting that right demands more skills than photographic knowledge and a costly camera. Despite having only 5 million pixels, this image has been reproduced a foresight in a calendar, and it was sharp. The E1 was certainly an outstanding camera, but not perhaps appreciated at the time. Shooting into the light is a challenge for any photographer and camera. Forget auto. You will probably end up with flare and a sun looking like an atomic bomb through burnout. No, it's time to take control. Whilst a zoom lens, is, yeah, that's okay, but a prime, because of its simpler construction, is best. Either way, stop down even to f16 or 22. Yes, I know, I know about diffraction, but flare with a wide aperture is far worse. Somehow, I have got away with f11 and a starburst without a filter, but I spot metered close to the sun to contain highlights and then light and shadows in Lightroom. Noise, yes, it can happen, but blown out highlights are worse, so you're caught both ways, but that, that is where the traditional photographer with experience enters. By the way, you may like to protect your eyes by using the camera screen to compose the shot. Whilst I prefer the big view, I also look for patterns. Shooting into the light, the ridges display rim lighting, emphasising their shapes. The composition is enhanced by a low winter sun, but as half of the picture is in shadow, highlights will be rendered overexposed and difficult to correct in post-production unless they are spot metered or the EV changed to a minus value. Low winter light was also a feature at Tintin. The composition is questionable. The large supporting pillar divides the picture into two images that don't quite come together. I like breaking rules, and here the opposing views add to the breadth and vastness of the place. As with the last photograph, it is important to preserve detail in highlights by spot metering and lightening shadows later in post-production. This was tricky. Mount Stewart on the Isle of Butte has only allowed interior photography in recent years, and that is thanks to the smartphone. They were unable to stop them from being used. However, no tripods, no flash. I kept to the back of the party. You cannot wander at will, incidentally, but it granted me a few more seconds to take photographs without people for catching up with the main party. No photographic niceties here. You just have to snap away and keep your fingers crossed. Obviously, the windows are much brighter than the ceiling. The dynamic range is huge, and spot metering the windows rendered the ceiling far too dark, causing noise when corrected in post-production. Fortunately, I had the wit beforehand to realise this, 
and then exposed in between with the emphasis towards highlights giving both the windows and ceiling a chance when corrected. I think it has worked, don't you? Ely offers similar challenges to Mount Stewart, but with more time, and they allow tripods. Forget Flash, however, it won't go that far. Nevertheless, I handheld at a sixth of a second, underexposed by minus 0.7 EV, but still spot metered from the octagon. I changed the EV to minus 0.7 because the octagon, a very important feature of the cathedral, occupies only a small part of the composition and is overwhelmed by extensive dark areas, which can give a false reading, but fortunately seen first in the electronic finder. This technique is based on experience and not by twiddling knobs and dials in search of a magic answer. Yes, I use them, but they are only an aid. Normally, I do not like converging verticals, but it works here when the floor cannot be seen. Black falls the camera's metering, regardless of the mode. I correct this by underexposing sometimes as much as two whole stops using the EV scale. This actually helps hand-holding, and then increase by an extra stop by upping the ISO to 400, which I execute when there is simply no choice. That gave me a shutter speed of a fifteenth of a second. I still spot meter, the dynamic range is huge. You have to take control by using the electronic finder. However, quite a bit of correction was executed in Lightroom. For more information, see my YouTube production, York at Night. I don't like deadly, dull and dreary landscapes. It gives me depression. It is a branch of photography that requires skills beyond photography, especially when you are miles from home. However, there is more to landscape photography than bright chocolate box colours, but I'm going to start with one. Here, the appeal is symmetry, especially if you zoom in further. But the advantage of using a wide-angle optic is the near-perfect mirror reflection. Although the dynamic range is limited, I still spot meter of a highlight to intensify colours. I also control white balance. It can be doing anything if left on auto, you are simply no longer in control. And whilst I save to RAW, it can be changed later in Lightroom. Nevertheless, I like to take control by using either daylight or cloudy presets. Neither do I muck about with ISO. 200 is best for preserving quality, so I stick with it. Here comes the sun, and the rain too. Sometimes you have to suffer for your art. I admire photographers who camp out on a mountain overnight to capture the magic of a dawn. I am happy to admit that I am past that activity. I'm far too old. But shots like this demonstrate that an exhilarating experience can also be enjoyed at sea level, and therefore more accessible. What I shouldn't admit to is that the coach taking my party of photographers is just behind me. After leading 250 photographic holidays for HF holidays, November 2019 in the Lake District was my last. Planned the previous year, the last shoot for the party was the Castlerigg Stone Circle, just outside Keswick, shot at sunset. Obviously, much was left to chance, but the gods smiled and granted us a spectacular sunset. It provided the perfect conclusion after 25 years as a photographic leader for HF Holidays.